like that. I'd like were very good. Well, you have just the barest trace of an accent. What do you call that? They open up. A bank clerk, that's right. And the name of the company is Mofo Magic. Yeah, well, you made the right decision, you called the right number. Yeah, yeah. Let me put it this way the magicians we represent are all top flight professionals. Yep, some of the brightest up and coming young stars in the magic business. Every one of them has a live rabbit, presents a neat and attractive appearance, and does an entertaining show full of color and audience participation. Yeah, tough audience. What do you mean, how tough? Oh, no problem. It's perfect rehabilitation. Yeah. Troubled teenagers love magic. It's an escape for them, away from their problems with the law and into a fantasy world. Illusion, fantasy. Yeah, they'll love it. Yeah, oh, oh that's no problem. No, magic is the international language. Yeah, that's the best part. Only $150. The professional down from New York working the Hotel Washington on the weekends. He figures that getting the map for exposure while he's in town can't do any harm, what with all the exclusive parties politicians throw. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he's given us permission to book him at a third his normal fee. That's $150. It usually gets a lot more. He's real popular in New York, stuff in Boston. Actually, he was just out from Magic Castle, I think. He was working in L.A. Great. Then just send your check to uh, Mofo Magic Company, 2164 North Street, Northeast, Washington, D.C. And get that check to us by the 5th, so it has two weeks to clear before the uh, show on the 19th. Okay, thank you. Oh, no, thanks. Goodbye. Hi, Wally. What can I do you for? I got 40 bucks for my birthday, Pen. Hello, Mrs. Carter. Is Dennis there? No, no, little Dennis. This is Pen from Mofo Magic. Tell her, get, get, uh, get Wally a Coke from the fridge, would you? Hi, Dennis. Congratulations. You got a show on the 19th. Yep. $25, and you can use our rabbit. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a youth group, but it's great exposure. I mean, the adults there see you before you know it, you work in their parties, too. Yeah. I know, I know, but someone must have seen you at the Cub Scout show because they requested you specifically. Okay, Dennis. Bye-bye. Do good. I'm sorry about that, Wally. Uh, we do bookings, too. So when your act is ready for the public, you just uh, let us know, OK? OK, Pen, I will. And you're working on your live rabbit production, right? Because uh, lay audiences love those animals. I know, Pen. I'm working on it. I got 40 bucks for my birthday, Pen. I need $40 worth of performance quality props. My mom's out shopping. And I've got an hour to decide. You got 39 and a quarter after the Coke, Wally. Now, you take a look around the case and see what would look good in Wally's Wonder Show. What's that quarter do? Oh, that's a, that's a great one. It's impromptu. You carry this quarter around with you. And it's just when you're kind of like casually sitting around you, uh, with your friends and they want to see a trick for you, you, uh, show, you show the quarter around them. Let them see it real clearly. And then you uh, borrow a cigarette. Just like that. One of our best after dinner tricks, and it's only six seventy-five. The professionals we have in here have been buying them up like crazy. They're from Denmark, and I think this demo is our last one, and they're they're not even making them anymore. I'll take it. Okay, you got uh, you got thirty-two fifty left now, Wally. Do you want any uh, stage illusions, or you want to stick with close-up? You doing any restaurant Pen, gigs coming up? I'd like to see the invisible thread, please. Well, if you could see it, it wouldn't be worth a damn now, would it, Wally? <laughs> you want to see the full demo? Yes, please. Okay, give Teller a second to set it up here. Now you got uh, you got better eyes than us, kid. Can you can you see that at all? Uh, back off, kid. You're breathing on my partner's fingers. Sorry, Teller. Sure is a good batch, isn't it? It's a great batch from Australia, Sydney. They do fine work down under. Now watch it. It's it's a real pretty demo. Now, being invisible, the uh, thread won't hold much weight, but it will handle a card nicely. You can get a freely selected card to the top of the deck, can't you, Wally? Yeah, I can't do a pass good yet, but I can use an in-job. Okay, so the spectator's card's on top of the deck. 
Then you try to tie a knot in this stuff, you're gonna end up blind as a bat and about two beans short of burrito. So you get a little glob of magician's wax and you roll it in your fingers like that till it looks like a little ball of snot. And you take your little snot ball and you fix it to the end of the thread. Now this is done before the trick starts, of course, it's part of your advanced preparation. Now after you've gotten the car to the top of the deck, while you're pattering a blue streak, you get a bend lengthwise in the card like that and you stick your little snot ball with the thread right to the face of the card like that and then you put it on top of the deck and push it down so that the wax holds the card flat now tell her get a hold of the uh, get a hold of the other end there just yeah get the, okay get, 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 okay now he's got it now watch is that your card go ahead volley pick it up Look at it, stare at it. You won't see a, won't see a thing but a little, little glob of snot right there in the face. See, once he lets go of that thread, you won't find it at all. It's a pretty thing, Wally. It's a real pretty thing. Okay, Pan, I want the invisible thread. Now I've got enough left, right? Yeah, don't you want the method of the invisible? Oh, hold on, let me get this. Mofo Magic, all your amazing needs. Yep, Teller works here, but maybe I can help you. My name is Pen. <laughs> yeah, Teller. Okay, T-E-L-L-E-R, but you probably know him as half the team, Penn and Teller. Yeah, but he doesn't use his first name, it's just Teller. <laughs> Are you the Dr. Teller that taught uh, classics at Oxford and uh, speaks seven dead languages? Sure. Yeah, he'll be here all afternoon. Listen, if you need a magic show in Latin, I... <laughs> I don't know, but they knew your first name. So, Wally, you want to know the method on invisible thread? Well, yeah. I mean, yo, I want, I want the thread. Okay, you know the rules of the shop, Wally. What we sell here are secrets. And once you know a secret, you can't return it. So give Teller the 495, and we'll tell you all about invisible thread. Okay, Pen. But my mom's gonna be here soon. And you guys still have to show me how to do my hippity hop rabbits. You got time, kid. Invisible thread may be the most important trick you ever learn. I'll give Teller the money. The whole trick to invisible thread is the demonstration. We can't really do a trick with invisible thread because there's no such thing as invisible thread. It's just a little piece of wax and a bent card. But if you can perform invisible thread, you can perform any trick in the world. It's pure showmanship. It's acting. Now watch. The first thing you need to know is this. If you bend a card and put a piece of magician's wax on the face, it'll pop up on its own as soon as the wax loses its stickum. Before it does, it'll wiggle just a little. And when you see that wiggle, you mime pulling the thread, and the card pops up on its own, but it looks just like you triggered it. Now, that's the easy part, kid. The hard part is selling it. Now, you get this card that says invisible thread across it, real official-looking print. Teller will give you that card. And you take out the card, and you act like you're letting them in on something really secret, like you're not supposed to tell. Real quiet and secret, you're telling me you got invisible thread. And you start squinting and fumbling around trying to find the thread. And take your time, kid. Half the entertainment value is watching that damn fool idiot, pardon my French, climb the walls watching him squinting and fumbling around. And then, and here's the great part, kid. You hold it right up to him and make him stare at it. You're going to have a blast watching him squinting and staring at nothing. And when you're sick of laughing to yourself, you just bring out the wax, hook up the thread, Watch for the wiggle and fake the pulling. You guys just ripped me off. Now let me finish, Wally. When you've learned to really perform invisible thread, you'll have learned the basis for all magic. All the showmanship and acting you'll ever need is right there in the old invisible thread trick. And I saved the best part for last, Wally. And we sold you this trick for $4.95, and that's cheap. But for that same price, Toe's gonna throw in some extra wax and some extra invisible thread cards. Then you'll be able to go out and sell these to your friends for up to $12 a piece. And even if you only get 50 cents a piece, you'll still have made a nice profit after only 10 performances. It's really a great trick, kid. Tell and I have made quite a little uh, career out of it. When Harry Blackstone Jr. or David Copperfield or Doug Henning or Bernie, the guy that does the great Dove Productions, when any of those guys are in here, this is the trick they want to see us do. And they learn from it, too. David Copperfield actually borrowed a pencil from Teller and took performance notes right here. And not the trick, but some of the style you saw here this afternoon ended up in one of his national television specials. 
He wrote us a thank you note right over there on the wall. That's one thing about Copperfield. He never forgets where he learned something. What's special? The big one, the one he did in a foreign country. I'm never gonna make any money off of this. If I do it for my friends, they'll just think I'm a crook like you guys. If I do it for strangers, they'll just beat me up, take my money, and I end up with my picture on a milk carton. I hate you, Penn, and your dummy crook friend. He can talk, he just doesn't like to. Probably because he doesn't want to lie like you. That's not a very professional way to act, and if you're not a professional, I'm gonna have to charge you sales tax. Then I have to go and get another dollar forty-six from your mom. That's a good idea. I think I'll go tell my mom. And see what she thinks about a couple of grown men stealing birthday money from my only eleven-year-old son. And if she tells my dad, you guys are dead. Wally, 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 Wally. Hey, 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 now you stick with a straight dove act, okay? Now you make me a promise right now that you'll never go into comedy magic. You have no sense of humor. We're pulling your leg, kid. We wouldn't charge you $4.95 for some, for some wax and a few cards. List on them's only a buck ninety-five, and with your magician's discount, that's a buck and a quarter. And along with that, you get a, a little dog that smokes cigarettes. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's one thing I've learned about the great professionals in our business is that they're always kidding each other, pulling each other's legs. <laughs> now you got a few extra bucks left. What do you want? Give me a vanishing cane. There you go, Wally. And remember the uh, magician's code and keep this whole thing secret from your mom. Uh, and your dad. Yeah, thanks. We're looking for Mr. Teller. A Mr. Yeah, so uh, what do you gentlemen need here this afternoon? You've probably heard we have the finest magic illusions in town. And you're in luck. We just ran across a disembodied princess and a uh, sword suspension that's in perfect condition. And we got a good deal on them, so I can let you have them uh, pretty cheap. Uh, so, uh, you guys uh, new in town? Or you on the road, just passing through? We're not magicians. Oh, you should consider it. Teams are very popular nowadays. You guys get a look. You got the shades, the whole Blues Brothers thing happening. Uh, Vegas is really waiting for an act like you guys. We already have jobs, Mr. Teller. Well, you should consider some close-up magic. It's it's great for business. I mean, you like to wear these these drab little suits. Why not add a boutonniere? You need an icebreaker? Boom! Seven bucks. No skill required. And we don't have to uh, charge you tax because uh, you're professionals. We work for the government. Oh, we sell these. And we need to bring you in. Whoa! First of all, I'm not Teller. He is. And second of all, the reason we don't charge sales tax is we're, uh, we're selling mostly to professionals. This is not regular retail. We don't care about sales tax. You'll be paid for your time, so whichever of you is Mr. Teller, just come with us. Oh, he doesn't work solo. We work as a team. If he goes, I go, and you pay both of us. We're only authorized to bring Mr. Teller. We need to ask him a few questions. He won't talk to you. We have people at the Pentagon who are familiar with American Sign Language. We'll be able to communicate with him. Oh, no, no, he doesn't know any sign language. There's, there's nothing wrong with him. He just doesn't like to talk to anybody uh, except me. Uh, if you take him alone, uh, he'll just pout. Okay, we don't have all day. Come on. Now, we both get paid uh, full salaries, right? Plus expenses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teller, they're not going to throw all these people in prison. So, here we are. What's going on? Name, please. He's Teller. Are you arresting him? T-E-L-L-E-R. Is he under arrest? Because I'm just with him because he won't talk to you without me. And the guys that brought us here told us we're getting paid your highest amount in cash with no deductions because we're in show business. We work for ourselves. Fine. Just take a number. The general will be with you any moment. Yeah, they also told us we're getting our expenses, and we're hungry. We'd like our lunch money now. Number 12. 
when Mr. Teller may be called into the hearing room at any moment. So if you could just stay here, we'll provide your lunch. We wouldn't want you running around and getting lost. Okay, I'll have a roast beef sandwich on white bread with coleslaw right there on the sandwich, not, not on the side. Onion, garlic, potato chips, and a quart of seltzer. My partner would like a half a chicken, done any way you like, and two chocolate yoo -hoos. Fine, just help yourself to the buffet. Thank you. Now, uh, what's going on? I'm not at liberty to discuss that. You don't understand. Some of our material requires advanced preparation, and we'd like to know the situation so we can be prepared and make a professional impression. I'm sorry. That information is classified. Oh, you can tell us. We're professional magicians. We earn our living keeping secrets. I'm sure you can keep a secret, but I have to keep my job. I can't tell you. Do you remember when uh, David Copperfield vanished the jet? No. How about when he vanished the Statue of Liberty? Yes, I saw that. There was radar and everything, right? Okay. Now, you tell us what's going on in that room, and we'll tell you how David Copperfield vanished the Statue of Liberty. Got a deal? Okay. Now, you're where the camera crew I'm was. I'm not yeah, going to tell you what's in that room. Okay, lady. You blew it. We're going to find out what's going on in that room anyways, and you're going to die not knowing how Copperfield vanished the Statue of Liberty. Well, I have to live with that, I guess. Oh, you tell her. Oh, that's the funny thing about my partner, you know? When he practices something, does it perfectly. But in day-to-day -day life, he's, he's very, very clumsy. Now, if we could borrow a nickel from you, we'd like to show you a miracle we learned in New Guinea. I'm working now. I'm not allowed to watch tricks. Maybe one of the other people who are waiting would like to see your trick. They're illusions. Thanks a lot. Number 14. Okay, lunch orders for the other room. Uh, we got a general, we got four military aides, we got a doctor. <laughs> Look at that, it's a Russian day. Russian guy's eating sushi, that's terrific. Now, you add a uh, couple dozen jelly donuts to the bottom of that and uh, put that back on her desk. Okay, here we got the list. Uh, Susan Weaver, astronaut. Dr. Randall Zwicky, biochemistry. Uh, Arthur Butata, uh, Chief Okita Tribe. Uh, and Sally Chafee, circuit board. Are we going to try to I'll tell you one thing, tell her. These doctors could not be getting paid more than us. And we've got her personal address book. Just put our uh, name and number under party entertainment and uh, put that back on our desk, too. Okay, what do we got here? We got lucky number 111. 111. And they're only up to 16, okay? Let's find out who has 17 and switch tickets. Come on, let's go. And hang it up in a very dry and without wrinkles. Hi, we're Penn and Teller. We're professional magicians. Let me see what number you have here, dear little tag here. Number 22. Thank you so much, Penn and Teller. Don't forget it. Excuse me, sir. Uh, we're Penn and Teller, professional magicians. Let's just check this number here. Okay, they'll be with you very shortly. Okay, very shortly they'll be with you. Excuse me, uh, we're Penn and Teller, we're professional magicians. Let to check all your numbers here. Whatever you have here, that's 31. Number 17. Oh, great. I wanted to talk to you because I have number 17, but I'm really not the right Milstein. It's really funny. There's a Philip W. Milstein who works in the pen. Excuse me, in the Pentagon, and they're always getting me confused with him. So I'm actually an internist. I have nothing to do with anything. Oh. Well, it's too late for 17. Let's, let's see if 140's come in yet, Jim. Good, you got your number. Well, allow me. What do we got here? Lucky number 111. It's 111. Why don't you help yourself to the buffet? Uh, make a few friends. If any questions, the receptionist will be happy to help you. Now, go ahead. You know, you drive a hard bargain. I'm going to tell you how Copperfield vanished the Statue of Liberty and how to saw a lady in half. And all you've got to do is tell me why the Russian guy in the other room is having apple pie for dessert and our general from the U.S. of A. is eating strawberry yogurt. Puzzlement. know what these people have in common. They're the kind of people that give private parties. The kind of private parties that could use a team of professional close-up magicians at their next festivity. Three of clubs. So you've got your card clearly in mind and you're concentrating on it. Well, I know what card I looked at, but I have a lot on my mind. So, I guess the uh, Walter Reed Biochemical Department probably has a big uh, Christmas party every year, don't they? Well, the secretaries and the orderlies, yeah, they have a little get-together, but I never attend. Oh, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Those Christmas parties are usually awful. 
Then you can get yourself on the entertainment committee, though, and book an act that no one will want to miss this year. your card? I don't. I, I, I don't think it is, but I'm not too sure. You see, I, I may be confused. I don't play cards, and I don't know the little the, uh, the, the the suits on the cards. I don't think that's my card, but it's a very nice trick anyway. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, this is my partner, Tell Tell this is the doc. Uh, how do you do, sir? Uh, Dr. Randall's Wingy, biochemistry, uh, Walter Reed. Uh, tell her, come on, mind your manners. Offer the doc some food. Oh, no, no, thanks. No, I'll get a sandwich later. Thank oh, no, no, you. really. He's not hungry. Ha have a sandwich. Uh, no, no, please. I, I, I get it. Eat get... the goddamn sandwich. Uh, yeah. Eat, eat, eat. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. I guess it's a club sandwich, huh? <laughs> now, I'm not claiming to be psychic, but I bet you'll find a couple business cards in there for a group of magicians that might be just perfect for the, uh, for the Walter Reed Christmas party. He's on the entertainment committee. Number 26. I myself enjoyed the buffet, but my partner Teller, I think, ate something that didn't quite agree with him. Let's help him out here. Would you take the circle and take it? Let's see, how long will it come? One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on, count with me. 10, 11, 12, everybody. 14, 50. <laughs> you know, if I were you, I'd stay with the luncheon meat, you know? <laughs> Some of those guys aren't American ambassadors. They're ambassadors. They give big parties and often. Now remember, professional impression all the time. Okay. Let's give out some of these cards, get ourselves some more jobs, okay? <laughs> We're a pen and teller. We do magic for all occasions. We could do a here, take this. We could do a halftime celebration for you, maybe. <laughs> Work out nice. Phone number's right on there. Give us a call. Hello. Hey, did you see that last thing? That's a lot of coils, isn't it? There you go. There you go. And here's 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 a card for you. And uh, you two ladies have a card too. And uh, I know what you like. You're the kind of guy that likes balloon animals, aren't you? <laughs> we do a few balloons. Come on, bring, bring over the horsey. Balloon animals! Now, sir, would you please take the magic wand and make a couple passes right over the silks? Just take the wand right there. <laughs> you always break everything you play with? No, just, uh, you don't even need the wand. Make a magical pass right over here. You know, no, a little, little, little more up. Yeah, a little magical pass right there. And grab this hand of this, this side of this silk. Telegrabs the other and presto! Maybe you didn't do it right. Let's get him a different wand, shall we? Now the hat's tilted back just about right. He's getting another wand. The two silks are still tied together. And there's the wand right there. <laughs> you did it again. Excuse me, ma'am. We're, we're doing a trick over here you might want to see. We're professional magicians. We're available for parties, bar mitzvahs, cocktail parties. We MC. Uh -huh. You chose one. Totally sure. of your free will. You showed the card to her. You yes. had the card clearly well, in your I mind. Don't... And no, you memorize it, and you're concentrating on it, okay? Now, you, ma'am, sure. would you please name a number? No, I will not name a number. I don't care about your stupid card tricks. It, it's, it's, they're illusions. We're doing illusions. What is this, some sort of psychological warfare? I mean, uh, uh, you know, some sort of cruel trick to see if magicians can drive us crazy? I don't want to be entertained. I want to know what's going on here. I mean, and for all we know, we could be being brought into that room one by one and being killed. You see what happens when cousins marry? <laughs> but seriously. If they're killing us one by one, why are they serving refreshments? This is a very pleasant buffet. There's real blue cheese. Now, why don't you just calm down, relax, and name a number? No! Now, look! I've missed my dance class. I've missed my dinner with a roommate. I'm about to miss a lecture. I mean, this is fascism. Why are you all sitting around here like sheep? We, we have a right to call our loved ones. We have a right to use the telephone. You pawns are telling us nothing. I was forced to come into this room. I didn't ask for this. Was this my choice? No! Your card mine. I would like to know what's going on. We have a basic human right not to watch magic tricks! Hi, we're Penn and Tell. I see a card trick. Yo! Step off! Certainly. 
Because the name's Houdini, but I'm no magician. See, I came here tonight because I'm on a mission. No optical illusion, no cards up my sleeve. You may find this hard to believe, but I'm better than Harry and I dream a genie. I'm the rapper Jal Lil from the group Houdini. I like a Zam, say I like a zoo. Can't understand that, too bad for you. Oscar Bunny is happy in his bunny house. Bonnie Bunny joins her hubby. Of course, when you put two rabbits together in the dark, one plus one equals... And speaking of miracles, my name is Penn Gillette. This is my partner, Teller. We do conjuring, ledger domain, magic, sleight of hand, and a couple of real miracles. We're illusionists. We're available for all occasions, birthday parties, bar mitzvahs, classy cocktail parties. We could MC on a charity bill. So you need professional entertainment. Think of Penn and Teller. Give us a call anytime. We got an answering machine. It's got a funny message. You'll love it. And if you bump at anybody we know, say excuse me. <laughs> Number 315. Hi, we're Penn and Teller. We're professional magicians. We'd like to show you a miracle. Ooh, nice sunglasses. These are uh, prescription shades, right? Let me show you a little something now. Set them right here in this envelope, and we're going to show you. What are you doing? Tell her! Oh, no! Look what he's done. Well, there's only one way to fix this, and that's magic. Yeah, we're Penn and Teller. We're available for private parties. We do professional magic. Go ahead, check it out. Check it out. Look at your sunglasses. There's a card. Give us a call. This room and I happen to have missed an extremely important dinner. So, we're off the shop. My partner Teller put the card in his pocket. Wouldn't be a The right to attend was Is that your card? The right to leave the room nope. during well, a bad this. show. That's your card. All of your rights are diamonds. being taken away. I, I sure? hate card tricks. <laughs> we must stop these people from now. They're illusions. They're illusions. Just calm down, okay? Just calm down. All we've got to do is work together. Everything will be fine. Just, just let me talk to you for a second. Is that's your card at three o'clock. Hey, 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 Could you show me a card trick? So Rambo wants to see a card trick, huh? Okay, I'll show you a card trick. You aren't colorblind, are you, Rambo? No. Okay. When you see a black card, you say coal. When you see a red card, you say fire. Okay? Coal. 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 Fire. You're about to meet some beings from another planet, boys. Real, live, extraterrestrials. I mean, these guys are aliens. And they're like interplanetary efficiency experts. See, there's not that many planets in the universe that are habitable. And we're living on one of them. They say we're redundant. They say we're not unique. See, there's no human beings anywhere else. But they say that somewhere there's this creature that has bones like us. And a different one. And like a whole different solar system that has teeth and then fingernails. And another, like light years away, that has red blood cells. So, the way they figure it, they might just as well destroy the human race and repopulate Earth with a species that is unique. For the good of the universe. They got this thing checked out completely. But they gave 72 hours for us to come up with something that is unique. Yeah, that's fair of them, huh? Let's go. I have ushered 230 people into that room. And 230 people came out the back door crying. 230 of the smartest, most unique people in the world. And they failed. So how about you guys go in here and kick a little ass? We're on. On Point Hill Street? Break a leg. Or you'll break it for us. 
Which one of you guys is E.T.? You are Mr. Teller? No, Teller's my partner over here. My name is Pan, and I'd like to speak with the space slime that's going to destroy the human race. <laughs> is that him? <laughs> he's not a refrigerator. <laughs> is he in the refrigerator? Is he just over there in the refrigerator? <laughs> you guys are on our side, right? One of you G.I. Joes just lob a couple hand grenades in there, blow that mass of galactic jello back to Kingdom Come, get your pictures on cereal boxes. Wait. If we kill their ambassadors, the orbiting mothership will destroy the human race without a hearing. Maybe they're bluffing. Now, oh, why were not these two called in? We don't have no. much time. Okay. These Come two were called in. Mr. Back. Tiller, the little no. one was called in. He is the foremost authority on Indo-European cognates in classical yeah. languages. Nine years ago, Dr. Teller left Oxford, became a magician, and stopped talking. He talks to me. You think the classic's gonna save the world? We hope the problem of this magnitude would bring him out of retirement. We don't need any European cognates. We don't need linguists. The human race is unique. Ergo, we deserve to live. They say, prove it. Okay. You probably covered uh, two eyes, nose, five fingers, a couple feet, right? But what about that emotional stuff? You know, like Spock on Star Trek didn't have, like, you know, we cry and we suffer and we save kittens, things like that. They have emotions. All our emotions. And another 723 that you have never thought of including a special kind of melancholy that only accompanies potassium-rich air breathing species. That's cool. How about the Velvet Underground? You know, the uh, Velvet Underground, Lou Reed's band, late 60s. You cosmic crybabies got the Velvet Underground? We have cultures that use sound for artistic expression. Yeah. I didn't say sound as artistic expression. I said the Velvet. So that's one thing you don't got. Now, you got Elvis? You are talking about individuals. We are talking about a species. I don't think this Earthling understands the universal picture. Oh, I'm talking about the universal picture. I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about Elvis Aaron Presley. Now, if you guys don't have Blue Hawaii out there in Never Never Land, you kindly get in your space chopper, get out of my face, out of my country, off my planet, out of my solar system, and out of my galaxy. Now, how is that for universal picture, Pinhead? Thank you, gentlemen. Next. Whose side are you on, soldier boy? If the human race is destroyed, no one anywhere in the universe is going to remember Elvis. You remember that promise we made him the day he died? We said we'd never forget. Never. Those space slugs aren't going to remember Elvis. Or Houdini. Houdini? Houdini? Houdini! Houdini! Yo, man! Sorry, I was, I was out of line. May I ask our uh, extraterrestrial friends one more question? Go ahead. Thank you, sir. So, you guys ever heard of Invisible Thread? Next. Two. Look. Just a minute there. They want to see the Invisible Thread. It better be good. So, my friends, never heard of Invisible Thread, huh? Well, I'm not surprised. We've kept it pretty quiet. It's been in my family for over 12 generations, but nothing published, no books or nothing. It was discovered by my great, 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 great grandfather up in Newfoundland. Uh, there's this little worm 
It's like a silkworm, only it's not a silkworm, it's an invisible thread worm. Some larva of some clear wing moth or butterfly or something. And I can't live outside of Newfoundland. Well, we've got the shop, we got to uh, keep in the freezer for three months a year and in the uh, refrigerator for the other nine. All human knowledge is not in books and uh, microfilm. That's why you never heard of them. Especially with the knowledge of my family. We've uh, kept to ourselves for thousands of years. We're, we're very shy people. Being invisible, it won't hold much weight, but it will handle a card nicely. You can get a freely selected card at the top of the deck, can't you, my safe pal? Good. I like a man uh, being in the deck of cards. Can you see that stuff at all? Can you see it at all? It's a great match. Now he's got a tie knot this stuff. He's gonna end up blind as a band about two feet short of the Reno. Take like a little glob of magician's wax. See, that looks, uh, roll at your fingers. It looks like a little ball of snot. You, you got snot in your plan, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, did a little snot ball. We got this stuff. We got this stuff. Now he's got it. Watch. <laughs> Is that your card? He wasn't that afraid. If you look at it right close, come right up here. Handle it. Stare at it. There won't seem to be a little smudge of snot on your face. Once it lets go of that thread, you'll never see it. That's a pretty thing. A real pretty thing. The hearing is over. Earth is not redundant. They will leave at once from the capital law. following message is for pen and teller's eyes only. All others turn their backs. In the interest of national security, I'm afraid I'll have to take that. General, I think we'd better let them go. Okay, you can keep your little secret message. Let me see some of that invisible threat. It's 495 to you, General. And hey, uh, don't bother thanking us, saving the human race or nothing. Just send our checks to the Mofo Magic Company. And we're going to go back to amazing the world, and you go back to trying to blow it. like with guns to follow us around, we're going to give you a call. So long. So, let's see what our uh, alien brothers in the Amana had to say, huh? <clears throat> ah, dear Penn and Teller, we know a good magician never reveals his secrets, so we felt we should keep this confidential. Sorry you didn't fool us for a minute. There was no thread. You just bent the card. But you didn't prove that mankind is not redundant. There is no other race in the universe that would lie about a thing like Invisible Thread. Have a nice day. They're crafty. Good magical minds. Next time we'll have to show them the anti-gravity quarter or the expanding dice. I do you for? Uh, give me a set of five cents, I'll tell you get your coat from the fridge. I'm looking for a deck of marked cards. What are you working on? Sultan's Dream? Yeah, that and two jacks in the 
Have you, have you tried the thing with the brake yet? Is it with the top change on it? Yeah, I'm trying to do it, but it's kind of hard. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a tough one. If you keep working on it, get your little finger in under where they can't see and then turn your whole body in. Yeah. How'd you do that invisible thread thing? Okay, I saw one. I told you, it's, it's, a, it's a great trick.